Welcome to the Interoperability Showcase. In collaboration with Duke University and the BPM Plus Health community, I'm honored to welcome you to detect human trafficking with automation within the emergency department. As far as I understand it, there are no other uh, groups talking about this on the floor of HIMSS, and so we're quite honored to bring this to you. Uh, it's an incredibly important subject, both for ourselves and for the larger community, and a, and a major uh, blight on our society, and something that we can solve uh, as a group, as we focus on this and get uh, hyper-focused on actually solving real problems that face all of us today. Um, I'm joined by a number of colleagues uh, from a number of different companies, uh, so we'll go through our, our respective introductions, uh, and I'll start. I'm, I'm you know, from Red Hat. Red Hat is the world's largi largest open source company. Uh, we provide platforms for hospitals, uh, for the Fortune 500, for a majority of the federal agencies in the world. And uh, in the healthcare space, our middleware is seen as the connective tissue that actually connects multiple systems together to actually solve real world problems. Uh, I'm quite honored to be able to participate in this space and uh, thank you for your time and attention. Hi everyone, my name is Savannah Stewart. I'm with Cerner. Cerner is a leading supplier of healthcare information software and solutions that uh, enables our clients, which range from small, single, independent physician practices to the federal government, all the way up to entire countries. We truly have an open and interoperable EHR and a platform that will enable clients to leverage technology like what you'll see today in whatever way, shape, or form makes sense to them to drive the clinical financial outcomes and provide uh, the best possible solutions for patients and providers. So you'll see throughout the demo today, as I'm moving through the scenario in the EHR, in the background, uh, we're integrating with the other technologies and our partners here with that data liquidity back and forth to make sure that uh, we are automating that process in the emergency department, capturing the information and driving patient outcomes. Hi, I'm John from Tricetech. Tricetech is a software vendor selling a low-code automation for process automation. Hi, I'm Michael Cicino with Visible Systems Corporation. Visible helps companies drive their strategy to execution. How do we do that? We do that through something called connected planning. We essentially enable you to align your strategy with your goals and objectives, and then we map all of that to the data mesh. The data mesh is where there may be distributed, decentralized data and from disparate data sources. However, using technology by Starburst data, we're able to connect to those disparate data sources and we enable you to use a graphical query builder to run your queries and gain insights into your strategy. Hi, my name's Kate O'Donnell. I'm with Smile CDR. Smile CDR is a health information technology company. Globally, we support the healthcare industry by providing a proven data and integration platform. Our solutions support organizations to adopt open standards that boost efficiency, reduce costs, and generate new value, which lead to improved outcomes overall. In this vignette, Smile will be the data fabric that sits within Red Hat's OpenShift container. Just before we begin, I'd like to do a bit of a trigger warning that we are going to be talking about difficult subject matter. We're talking about human trafficking, specifically child sex trafficking. So please practice some self-care as we will be diving into discussions about you know, child sexual abuse, sexual assault, physical abuse, and neglect. Combating human trafficking has been viewed as a very complex and often insurmountable issue as there is a lack of understanding and awareness around what actually constitutes human trafficking. As a result, many of the victims are left hidden in plain view. The impact of the overarching lack of awareness is particularly acute for the healthcare setting because many doctors are unaware of when they are actually dealing with a patient that is a victim of child sex trafficking. So often they are missing the signs of when one of their patients is being held captive against their will. For child sex trafficking, the emergency department is a cr crucial point of detection as we have found that 87% of children who are victims of child sex trafficking in, have a clinical encounter at some point. 
For our model, we have used the emergency department because the emergency department is a controlled environment with a workforce that is accustomed to working under protocols and workflow, workflow informed by the latest research. But challenges remain, mainly with the lack of awareness, training, access to data, and a true clear understanding and measurable objectives of how we can detect child sex trafficking means that detecting this falls on the shoulders of an already overly burdened and burnt out clinical workforce. Currently, clinical providers do not have the tools to identify or to safely help victims of child sex traffic trafficking when they encounter them. At present, only 1% of hospitals within the United States are screening for child sex trafficking at the moment. What we've done here is for our model is that we've assembled a unique combination of data process standards on flexible platforms that are designed for interoperability. Essentially, the model is data-driven to reduce bias. In addition, these process flows authored within the BPM plus health community are able to evolve over time and towards a more accurate and value-driven outcome. What we're going to do today is we're going to walk you through an encounter of a young woman who turns up in the emergency department. Our shareable models are built on the Trezo Tech Processes engine, which my colleague John is going to explain to you. John, can you tell us what's happening on the screen over here? Thank you. On the screen on our left, we'll be seeing a, a low-level uh, vis low vision of a business process model that will follow the patient in their journey through the emergency room, starting in the top left when they arrive and to the bottom right when they are discharged. Each horizontal area represents a pool and the pool corresponds to one of the uh, clinical uh, participants who will be taking care of the patient. At the top, we have the registrar, Carl. In the light blue, we have the nurse, Janie. Low tan, we have Dr. Gada. And in the orange, there's a social worker who will be actually doing the survey of the patient. We'll be uh, amplifying this so you can follow it more closely. And with animation, you can follow each task as the patient proceeds. Not only does this code give you a visual representation, but it also can be compiled, and then the actual code is uh, acting in a, an automated fashion with Cerner, Smile CDR, and our other participants. Hello, everyone. Hello, everyone. My name is Kat, and I will be taking the role today of Carl Hartman, the registrar. I encounter the patient in the waiting room wearing baggy pants and a hoodie, holding her legs tight to her body. She turned over her school identification card at registration, and I had been informed that she'd been dropped off at the emergency department. She reported her birthday as March 14, 2006. In registration, we established a chief complaint of physical abuse based on her first report of abuse by her boyfriend that morning. She also reported dehydration, vomiting, and soreness in her lower back, abdomen, and head. She had not lost consciousness during the physical abuse episode this morning, but she had reported uh, that she had very little memory over the last several days. The argument and follow-on fight was a result of her desire to leave the premises and seek medical attention. I took note of her story, let her know that she was in a safe place, and that her nurse would see her sh soon. Hello everyone, I'm Robin, and today I'm taking the role of primary nurse Janie Chatterley. I was able to connect to the patient's previous chart from another facility, made available by consent of the patient, and linked by our new EHR for use in triage. In addition, I reviewed Carl's notes and concerns as the patient had shared information beyond the chief complaint. I encountered the patient as she entered the triage room. The patient was withdrawn and not willing to make eye contact at first. The patient confirmed her pre-existing conditions, ADHD, anxiety, and depression, and her current medications, Prozac and Adderall. We spent a short time collecting her vitals, and I was able to confirm her chief complaint and reason for visit. Upon further questioning, the patient shared that she had been drinking heavily for days and believed that she had smoked cannabis, though she was unsure. For continuity of care, I decided to stay with her as she moved into the emergency treatment room 
where I asked her to declothe and don a gown. I observed the patient was not wearing any undergarments and presented a linear bruise and abrasion on her lower back and scrapes over her shoulder blades. The patient reported that the oversized sweatpants and hoodie were not hers, but clothes she had borrowed. Based on her reported dehydration and vomiting, I prepped her for an IV and in doing so, observed linear scarring going up her arm. The patient reported that the scarring was from self-harm, but most of the original scarring was from a broken wrist and surgery two years ago. I completed IV insertion, lab draw, and ordered fluids. Upon asking if I could contact her parents, the patient reported that she hadn't spoken to her father in several months and that her mom was unlikely to care. I left the patient to complete my charting and was able to confirm a visit to the emergency department two years ago with a broken wrist due to a fall after an altercation at school with classmates. During this previous visit, I noted that the school resource officer accompanied the patient to the emergency department where she had a negative pregnancy test and a urinalysis that showed a positive urinary tract infection. Upon completing the review, the EHR informed me that based on the current visit, the patient had been flagged as a possible child sex trafficking victim. And I should administer the six question green bomb survey, which our ED has recently implemented and for which I've received training in both survey administration and EHR documentation. When the patient came to the ER two years ago, based on her age and what she presented with, the green bomb survey should have been triggered. However, the system lacked these automation controls and the patient's current condition was missed. The green bomb survey is a brief screening tool that is meant to be administered in a high traffic clinical environment, such as an emer emergency department. The green bomb survey, when administered, if the patient elicits two positive responses, then they are flagged as being at high risk for being a victim of human trafficking, specifically child sex trafficking. If you look over to the screen over here, when the patient was asked the green bomb survey, she gave positive responses for having had broken bones and stitches. She used drugs and alcohol. She had sex with multiple partners. She's also had a history of a sex sexually transmitted infection and physical abuse, all of which are red flags for child sex trafficking. Hello, my name is Lee and I'll be playing the part of Dr. Gata today. Before meeting with the patient, I was informed by the EHR notification that a social work consult will be needed based on the results of the Green Bomb survey. Upon meeting with the patient, I proceeded with addressing her chief complaint. I received consent to perform a pelvic exam and physical assessment and noted bruising and scrapes over bony prominences on her back that have the appearance of carpet friction burn which were tender to the touch. Well-heeled scarring on her bilateral arms and her bilateral upper thighs. Heart, lungs, and abdomen sounded clear. With Janie present, we collected STI swabs and I performed a pelvic exam. No obvious injury was noted on pelvic exam, which is typical in both consensual and non-consensual sexual encounters. However, I noted that while examining the pelvic area, the patient was tender and complained of discomfort and could not tolerate the speculum exam. Janie noted that the patient was tearful and became very quiet and stared blankly at the ceiling while the pelvic exam was being performed. I thanked the patient for her patience and ordered some more fluids in the hope that we could get a urine sample. So it should be noted that had Janie not initiated the green bomb survey, that our model acts as a safety net and accounts for a second round of screening based on what Dr. Gata found. As we showed before, the results of the green bomb survey had more than two positive responses. So the, the victim was basically flagged as potentially for child sex trafficking. It was then decided that the, the plan for care would be keeping her overnight for medical treatments, specifically for dehydration. Based on the concerning findings of the Green Bomb survey, as well as the history of this child, the automation engine here has already created a referral to the social worker to follow up. Dr. Gata, Janie, and the social worker agree that Child Protective Services do need to be contacted and a report for neglect and dependency should be written up. 
specifically because when Janie had tried to contact the mother of the child, that the mother was not to be found. The plan of care going forward was that the patient would be kept overnight for further medical treatment until a safe discharge plan could be created in combination with the medical team and CPS. It was also decided that when the patient was more alert, a little bit more rested, that they would come back and consider a forensic exam for potential evidence if the patient consented. We've now concluded the clinical encounter. I'm going to pass the mic off to my colleague, Michael, who's going to walk us through the architecture. Thank you, Kate. Throughout the encounter, there was data flowing between the EHR Red Hat Fuse, Smile CDR, and Trisotech, where we had an automated workflow tracking the progress of the patient and acting as an orchestration engine for quality measure task, heuristics, and potential escalation patterns. This type of solution is capable of being deployed into any clinical environment, no matter how remote or challenging because it resides on OpenShift, a hyper-scalable, portable, and secure container platform. The informatics of this solution are best described by an integrated model-based environment as shown here. The visualization produced by Visible shows the role each model plays in automating the detection of human trafficking. It is important to note that each model is intelligent. By that, we mean it carries metadata critical to the role and overall scope of the automation. Additionally, it serves as a common language across clinicians and systems personnel. Let's begin with the clinical workflow presented by Trisotech. The workflows are represented by the business process management notation models. Inherent in the business process management notation are references to data. The data, for example, data objects or artifacts are available in a workflow via middleware software provided by Red Hat and Smile. Elements of the middleware software are represented in the Unified Modeling Language, or otherwise known as UML models, specifically in the Activity, Collaboration, and Sequence diagrams. Finally, the data retrieved and updated is stored in Cerner's Millennium Database. The actual mapping of this data through FHIR is guided by the representation of both conceptual and logical data models as defined in entity and class diagrams. All of these models and associated diagrams are typically found as a part of an enterprise architecture. In this particular use case, Visible Systems implemented these models using the Zachman Framework Enterprise Architecture. Thanks, Michael. This concludes our vignette. Thank you so much for bearing with us. We understand that this is a difficult subject matter. However, we can't shy away from the difficult things. It's only by engaging with materials such as this that we are able to come together and collaborate to help create solutions to help mitigate and hopefully one day prevent child sex trafficking from happening. All of the processes that were discussed in today's presentation were created within the BPM Plus Health environment. We invite you to come in, to join us in the evolution of healthcare. Please check out the QR code and come if you have any questions around BPM Plus Health and our community. Thanks so much.